it would be easy to lose hope. But we are not hopeless or helpless. We have a path to recovery if we choose to take it. That's what this SDG moment is all about. Coming together, coming together to save our planet and each other. Coming together also with the BTS today, which is a fantastic contribution. Now, two weeks ago, I launched our common agenda, a plan to reboot the multilateral system and gather the world around our common objectives. Because only by recovering together can we get the Sustainable Development Goals back on track. And I see five areas for urgent action. First, we need to end this pandemic. Our response has been too slow and too unequal. I call on the world to mobilize behind a global vaccination plan that doubles vaccine production to reach 70% of the world's population by the middle of next year. Second, we need to get down to the business of a sustainable and equitable recovery for all so that we stay on track to end poverty by 2030. And this, makes, this means making bold investments in systems that support human development, from education and universal social protection to health care and jobs. It means put, putting people above profits, including through progressive taxation and ending tax evasion, money laundering and illicit financial flows. And it means reforming the global financial system, tackling debt distress and ensuring that developed countries benefit from the recent allocation of special drawing rights. Third, equal rights for women and girls. We cannot achieve any of the SDGs without gender equality. We need bold investments to make sure every girl has a seat in the classroom and the skills she needs to chart her own future. We need to dismantle the power structures that allow discrimination, violence and economic hardship to keep one half of humanity down. And we need to make sure that girls and women have a seat at every table, from the halls of power to the boardrooms of business. Quatrièmement. Fourth, we need to end the war on our planet. This means committing to zero emissions by 2050. Ambitious climate and biodiversity plans no new coal plants after 2021, and mobilising $100 billion a year for climate action, and helping developing countries make the shift to green economies, a top priority of the upcoming COP26 meeting in Glasgow. We need you, all of you. All of you are critical to global recovery. I urge you to work with your governments to put people first in their budgets and recovery plans. Dear friends, the pathway is there. The choice is ours. Let's move forward with hope and conviction. And I thank you. And thank you, Mr. Secretary General, for underscoring the fact that we are neither hopeless nor helpless. And also for setting out the five key priorities for our recovery and beyond. I'm sure we'll no doubt hear more throughout the day. And next, I have the honor of introducing His Excellency, Mr. Abdullah Shaheed, President of the 76th Session of the United National General Assembly, the global town hall of our global village. Welcome, Mr. President. Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me to speak at the second SDG moment, an invaluable platform in our joint efforts to deliver on the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. As we are all aware, the pandemic has severely impacted the SDGs, but the irony is that the SDGs themselves provide us 
the most comprehensive and universal toolkit in our efforts to recover sustainably. The decade of action launched in 2020 will now need to be a decade of recovery, of recovering sustainably. Excellencies, my promise for a presidency of hope during this 76th session of the General Assembly is underpinned by five rays of hope, each intrinsically connected to the SDGs. Our first and second rays of hope on recovering from COVID-19 and rebuilding sustainably correspond directly to SDG 3 on good health and well-being, as well as SDG 8 on jobs and economic growth. The third ray on responding to the needs of the planet corresponds to a multitude of SDGs, including SDG 7 on clean energy, SDG 13 on climate action, and SDG 14 on the ocean and seas. And our final two rays covering human rights and UN revitalization cut across and uphold the entirety of the SDG agenda. Why else pursue such ambitious goals if not to respect and enhance the rights of the people everywhere? How better to achieve than, to, than through a multilateral system that is equipped to do just that? In essence, ladies and gentlemen, the workings of getting the SDGs back on track are our shared responsibility. The General Assembly can and is willing to play a part. Going forward, the gaps in political will and resource commitment remain a common fault line in our resolve to progress the SDGs. This must change. We need to ensure that countries, in particular the LDCs, LLDCs, and the SIDS, have access to adequate resources and capacity, support in their efforts to recover from the pandemic and achieve the SDG targets. Like everything else on policy, there is no one-size-fits-all. For this very reason, the SDG moment and platforms such as the ECOSOC's High-Level Political Forum offer an opportunity to reflect on where we are, where we could be, and what is holding us back, and the way forward. I encourage all to share success, best practices, lessons learned. The way, the best way to move forward. Let the setback that the world has seen strengthen our resolve and reinforce our determination to recover from the pandemic, to build sustainably and achieve the SDGs. Together, it is possible, and I thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, for those encouraging words. <clears throat> we can't measure progress without the right metrics. So before we go any further, let's get a reality check on SDG progress six years after their adoption. We're joined in the SDG studio by Ms. Claire Casey, the Global Head of Policy and Insights at Economist Impact. When world leaders came together in 2015 to adopt the Sustainable Development Goals, we all knew the challenge ahead of us. And we've made progress, but it has been hard won, uneven, and fragile. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown us just how fragile. Today, humanity faces a stark and urgent choice. Do we allow these fractures to grow, or do we break through to a greener, safer, and more equitable future? At Economist Impact, we're dedicated to driving positive change by using data and evidence to better understand the biggest issues and evaluate the best solutions. And we've been tr closely tracking action on the SDGs. Today, as we explore progress against the Sustainable Development Goals, let's remember, we know what we have to do, and we have the tools. The question is, do we have the will to act and keep the promise of Agenda 2030? Let's start with goal one, eliminating extreme poverty by 2030. In just 18 months, the COVID-19 pandemic...